Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you all. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause for coming today. Well done. Well done. Um, so I'm going to make this brief. brief. I've got a lot to cover. Um, I got involved with this uh, through the loss of my mother, who died from a brain tumor. I believed it was caused from her wireless deck phone. Now, if I pull out this meter here, this is the EMF radiation we're all exposed to on a daily basis. A lot of places are giving readings like this. Now, while you can protect yourself from normal everyday EMF radiation, 5G, there's no protection. So we really need to get the awareness out there and do something about it. Um, I just need the remote. So EMF radiation, where is it coming from? Um, EMF stands for electromagnetic frequency. So we're getting this radiation from phone masts, mobile phones, smart meters, antennas on LED street lights that they're now installing up and down the country, Wi-Fi routers, baby monitors, Fitbit, smart watches, Wi-Fi boosters, smart TVs, uh, deck phones, and lots of devices with Bluetooth. So here's some facts about EMF radiation. Microwave ovens operate at 2.5 gigahertz, okay? So 4G goes up to about 2.4 gigahertz. So we're basically living in a microwave oven all of the time with a door open. We're getting exposed to this all of the time. Tens of thousands of peer-reviewed studies, scientific studies showing harm from EMF radiation. You can look at the following sites for more information as well as my site, 5gawareness.com, where I've put all the, provided all the websites and a lot of the evidence for this. Uh, we're talking about what sort of effects do we get from long-term exposure from this radiation. So this is from the peer-reviewed scientific studies. Infertility, neurological damage, physiological damage, increased oxidative stress, DNA damage, aging, cancer, autoimmune disease. Children are absorbing 60% more of this radiation into their bodies. Their skulls are a lot thinner than ours. What are we seeing in school? We're seeing a lot of neurological illness, depression, suicide is on the increase, increasing ADHD, um, autism. Last 20 years, we've seen an 80% decline in insects. Where are all our insects now? I'm not seeing very many, especially in the urban areas. Lloyds of London won't insure against damage from EMF radiation. So this is the government's official line, and you can find this on Smart Energy GB website, is that Public Health England says that actually this is not a problem. You know, smart meters are fine. It's well within the guidelines. Well, unfortunately, for Public Health I uh, England and ICNERP, that the government often refers to, they're connected with the industry, and the industry are funding and supporting these guidelines. So the guidelines are insufficient. Often people are writing to their MPs, they're getting these template responses about Public Health England says it's not a problem. So we're going to look a little bit further into that. We've got Dr. Sarah Starkey, who's looked at the official guidelines, said that they're insufficient, and they're only looking at the thermal effects. So they're just looking at heating. They're not actually looking at the biological effects, what's happening to the DNA, to our blood cells. So her conclusions were that Public Health England are misleading the public. Uh, their conclusions are biased, so they're leaving out a lot of the studies that show damage, that show harm. They're ignoring these thousands of peer-reviewed studies that you can go directly to if you go to PubMed. Um, and uh, yeah, the UN has a specialized agency called the International Telecommunications Union, which is there to promote the interests of the telecommunications industry. So that's the UN. Uh, the World Health Organization and the UN have never responded to the EMF scientist appeal, which is an appeal that has been signed by hundreds of doctors and scientists to warn about the effects of this radiation that we're all being exposed to. So here's the appeal. You can find it at emfscientist.org. It's also linked on my website, 5gawareness.com. Um, and they cover the same sort of health problems as I mentioned earlier. And this is just getting completely ignored. So we're now going to see a video looking at the health impact of uh, smart meters on our blood cells.
While industry has failed to do any peer-reviewed studies on smart meters and health effects, a growing body of independent research is now starting to accumulate. In our second set of tests, we're using the smart meter. Before the exposure, we see the same thing as we saw in the first samples. Normal cell walls, fairly separated and looking healthy. So after two minutes of exposure in front of the smart meter at about one foot away, we see a totally different story. Sample one, you can see a lot of degradation in the cells. The cell walls have been broken and you see changes in the cells which are called mycoplasma. It shows a mutation to the cell. In the second sample, we see a different type of degradation to the cell membranes. You can see a corrugation here. This is called bottle cap formation, and it's known that this occurs due to oxidation or uh, exposure to free radicals. So this third subject, uh, when we did her sample, she had to be pulled away from the meter after 45 seconds because she complained about an increasingly severe headache. And here you see a phenomenon called rouleau, where the red blood cells are stacking up, which makes it very difficult for the blood to deliver oxygen to the tissues as they would be their normal function. Every single one of these is a degradation. Every single one of these shows a trauma to the blood cells and that came from something and the only variable was the smart meter. What's going on here? This is a wireless device which is unproven scientifically, which all the evidence so far proves is dangerous or questionable, which should therefore be studied intensely before it's released to the public. Clever people called the technology smart to make it seem intimidating so no one would question it. Some smart ad man came up with that and got paid $300,000 to call it a smart meter so you would feel less knowledgeable, which they know we feel, and then you wouldn't question the smart people putting it in your house. So I call them not smart meters, dangerous meters. So you can find this documentary linked on my website on the videos page. I strongly recommend you watch it. We're now gonna look at the effects on phone masts on animals. Now this is in France, and I'm very concerned about our food supply, so have a look at this. Il y a des endroits bien précis où c'est la mort assurée si on met les veaux clôturés à ces emplacements-là. avait un comportement bizarre, des vaches très fatiguées, qui ne voulaient plus aller manger, qui ne buvaient plus. Donc euh, là, on a commencé à se poser la question. Là, tous les, tous les deux jours, j'enlève les morts. depuis 20 ans qu'un élevage sous une ligne de tension, ça provoque exactement les mêmes problèmes. Exactement, on connaît le problème. Le sol. Le sol, conducteur ou moins de conducteur. Il suffit qu'il y ait un pylône ou une antenne relais qui s'implante sur des veines de terre conductrice, une éolienne par, euh, par exemple, théâtre. Deux kilomètres plus loin, le bâtiment, tout d'un coup, ça ne marche plus. So, um, what's the effect on human beings? What's the effect on children? Well, there's a very interesting case uh, in Ripon in California where there are cancer clusters, and of course they're happening in this country as well, in my local area, I've been shown various cancer clusters around the town. But what, what's happening with our children? So we're going to look at a quick video here. The phone company Sprint shut down a cell phone tower on the campus of a California elementary school after some parents said it may be linked to several recent cases of childhood cancer. Now, those families at Weston Elementary School in Ripping claim the tower could have exposed their kids to harmful radiation. My son missed growing up with his friends. My son lost all of his hair. It's not something that I wish on anybody to watch their child go through what our children have gone through. 
Kelly Prime's son Kyle was just 10 years old when he was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 2016. Five months later, Kyle's friend and classmate Mason Ferruli developed brain cancer. 14 hours to get the tumor out and he had five weeks of inpatient rehabilitation. He had to learn to walk, talk, eat, everything all over again. Two more kids at the school were diagnosed this year. At what point are you saying, we ought to take a close look at the school here? The moment that I found out that Mason had been diagnosed, it popped into my mind that something was not okay. The moms believe the recent increase in cancer cases could be caused by radiation from radio frequency or RF waves coming from this cell tower located on the elementary school campus. It is classified as a possible carcinogen that tells us that there is some evidence out there. I believe that everybody wants to believe our government. Technology is what it is and it's growing and it's out of it's growing out of control. Ferruli's son's cancer has returned and he's now undergoing treatment. Prime son Kyle is in remission, but he still undergoes scans every three months. I've looked into his eyes and I've looked at the fear that he has as a nine-year-old facing something, asking me, Mom, am I going to die? It would push you to fight as well. It would push any parent to fight. I won't stop until it's done, until that thing is gone. For CBS This Morning, Carter Evans, Ripon, California. So I really don't understand our government in this country either. They're putting millions, millions into this technology to roll it out throughout the UK. It's in the major political parties' manifestos. Why, why are they doing this if it's causing so much harm? So 5G, onto 5G. What is 5G? So do, uh, Professor Martin Powell, uh, he's professor of biochemistry at Washington State University. He made this interesting uh, quote putting in tens of millions of antennae without a single biological test of safety has got to be about the stupidest idea anyone has had in the history of the world. Now, the videos we've looked at, what we've looked at so far, this is w without 5G. So 5G is on a whole new level. So looking at 5G, what is 5G? It's the Internet of Things. It's fifth generation technology. It's masses of items microchipped. We're microchipping our pets. We're going to have automated agriculture, surveillance everywhere, as we're seeing all the CCTV cameras go up, just like in China. Building management, smart homes and smart cities. I went to Manchester recently. They're putting huge numbers of skyscrapers up. This is where they want people living. Um, wireless sensor networks everywhere. So we're not going to be able to escape it. It's going to create this wireless mesh that we're surrounded by. So here's more about 5G. So the base coverage of 5G will be below one gigahertz. This is what they're putting out on the antennas on top of the LED street lights. These can 3D map your homes. They can see you inside your home. And these will be used to guide the driverless cars. So they'll be connected with automated cars, with electric cars. And uh, of course, they're cutting down millions of trees around the country to make way for the antennas. Um, Smart. A lot of items are becoming smart now. So you've got smart meters, smart motorways. You've had over, I think, 40 deaths now since they've introduced the smart motorways because they've been smart motorways. They're doing away with a hard shoulder. So I don't know what you're supposed to do if your car breaks down. Uh, wireless devices are easily hackable. So a lot of security companies will wire in their computers using Ethernet cables. So I'd like to just show you a quick clip again. Uh, this is the Federal Communications Commission ex-chair Tom Wheeler announcing 5G in the United States. And the FCC is in charge of all interstate communications. So let's have a listen to Mr. Tom Wheeler. The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals. Now, to make this work, five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure-intensive. 
requiring massive deployment of small cells. I'm confident that the actions will lead to a cornucopia of unanticipated, innovative uses and will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important. And stay out of the way of technological development. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. The future has a way of inventing itself. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. We won't wait for the standards. If something can be connected, it will be connected. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole providence of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. Anybody like to invite him to your house for a cup of tea? I didn't think so. So, uh, Senator Blumenthal, this is a very important clip. Uh, the US Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee on the hearing of uh, 5G wireless technology and its future, Senator Blumenthal quizzed the wireless industry on whether any safety tests have been conducted to prove that 5G was safe. We're going to hear a shortened version of this clip. But uh, 5G, as you well know, also uses higher frequency waves that don't travel as far and will rely on a network of hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of small cell sites. And the question then is, are there any health implications, any public safety implications to those additional sites that are likely to be located close to homes, schools, workplaces, and closer and closer to the ground. My question for, for you, particularly Mr. Gillen and Mr. Perry, um, how much money has the industry committed to supporting additional independent research? I stress independent research. Is that independent research ongoing? Has any been completed? Where can consumers look for it? Um, and we're talking about research on the biological effects of this new technology. To my knowledge, there's no active studies being backed by industry today. But no, I'm not aware of any. So there really is no research ongoing. We're kind of flying blind here, so far as health and safety is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we're talking about a $17 trillion industry, the telecommunications industry, now more powerful than the pharmaceutical industry, no health or safety testing. So you've got here Dr. Sharon Goldberg, who's an internal medicine doctor. We're going to hear a little bit from her. I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. Um, I am going to skip many of the things I wanted to say because I didn't realize it was only five minutes. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. Um, we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects, so 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. 5G is a conversation about unsustainable healthcare expenditures. She is one of many, many doctors warning about this. So you've got the space appeal. Uh, again, hundreds of doctors and scientists appealing uh, to stop 5G on Earth and in space. Um, and then, of course, you've got Europe that's putting a lot of money behind 5G. So the European Commission has earmarked a public funding of 700 million euros to roll out 5G. 
Um, 5G is being installed on the lampposts, a lot of these LED streetlights going up. Of course, blue light from the LED streetlights has been linked to breast and prostate cancer, but still they're rolling this out. Uh, and then there's the injury to trees that's occurring. So here's some peer-reviewed research you can look up on uh, PubMed showing the damage to the tree that's facing the cell phone mast, and again, the leaves, and bushes. Here's a, here's a wireless uh, smart meter here, and the, the bush is dying off. And you've got the watercress test, where they uh, had crests close to a wireless router, and it, it just, uh, the seeds wouldn't grow properly. And then how's 5G being pitched? So it's being pitched as having a low carbon footprint. You know, they want to lower your carbon footprint because we've got to deal with our carbon dioxide problem, if you think of it as a problem. So smart meters, low carbon installations, this is how they're pushing this through. It's apparently going to save us from CO2 electric vehicles. What they won't mention is, is the dozen devices in electric vehicles that emit high EMF radiation. So they'll be a lot worse than diesel cars. So uh, lithium batteries are exploding. When you post something in the post, they'll often ask you if you have a lithium ion battery because it, it can explode very easily if it bumps around. But they're putting these in cars, which I find bizarre. So this shows how they're connecting with the street lights. And what we don't hear is that CO2 is actually greening the earth, that people with greenhouses use CO2 to help their plants to grow. So it's the gas of life. We are carbon-based. So if we get rid of carbon dioxide, that's going to probably cause a real problem for us, isn't it? So, of course, we don't hear about this. We hear about these climate emergencies, and uh, they fell the trees. This was in London before declaring the climate emergency. So it was nothing about uh, CO2. It was an excuse to get all this technology up and running. I made this video, 52,000 views now on YouTube. If you search for it in the search, it's now censored, so you have to go to my YouTube channel, 5G Awareness, and it tells the truth about Extinction Rebellion. It is not a grassroots organization. It is a government-supported and industry organization that's pushing out 5G. And I explain exactly what's going on in this video. Uh, if you look at the climate emergency documentation, you hear about them talking about electric vehicle charging points and LED street lights, which are key to the 5G infrastructure. Um, and then electric cars will be connected with 5G. And Huawei, this is a really important point, that a Chinese company is going to be taking over our energy infrastructure. So our cars running through the LED street lights. We're talking about everything. Automated agriculture to grow our food. China is going to be taking over our country. So I find that very, very concerning indeed, that we don't have control, that we won't have control over our energy, over, over our economy, if they roll out 5G. If Huawei, which of course Theresa May, gave the go-ahead and she was warned by the United States not to do so. So you've got here some of the people responsible. Uh, the charities, World Wildlife Fund, Pushing Smart Meters, Friends of the Earth, RSPB, on their websites. The UN, through the Sustainable Development Goals, we all must have smart grids. And Barry Trower, I don't really have time to cover this, but he's an expert, uh, Royal Navy, uh, ex-Navy uh, radar expert, and he's explained how this is weapons technology. They've used it in decades in war. Um, so why are they rolling it out on our streets? So how can you really get the word out? Spread the word of 5G to others. If you can get me an audience to speak about this, I'm more than happy to attend and get the word out. I really am desperate to wake up as many people as possible, and I thank you for listening to me so far today. Attend your local uh, council meetings. We've, had a, a, we've got a moratorium in Totnes. Pressure your councillors to have a moratorium to invoke the precautionary principle. Get your home wired up. Um, so we've had these. This is on my site where the councillors uh, opposed the um, 5G in the town. And you can also donate, and that helps me to get up and down the country talking about this, because I quit my five-figure salary in Tokyo as a headhunter. I'm now doing this full-time, and I solely rely on donations. So I welcome any support that you can give me. Um, and there are links to um, clothing, meters, which you can use to protect yourself or scan for radiation on the site or get a discount. And then the events that we've got coming up in September and October. And I've created a forum more recently as well. So um, how long do we have to deal with 5G? Um, this is just my, my sort of closing comment, really. And this is Professor Martin Powell, who I quote again, who's one of the leading 
scientists who's really trying to get the word out on 5G. And he said, what we know from human and animal studies is that we probably have between five and seven years until our collective brain function will crash based on exposures we already have. So this is without 5G. This is the rise in Alzheimer's, in dementia, in ADHD, amongst our children, but also amongst the adult population. This is without 5G. With 5G, I'm estimating six months. So we absolutely have to stop this. Who's with me? Thank you very much indeed. Nice to meet you. Thank you.